Yeah. Okay. So we went over how to do a site section and we went over how to do a site uh, site plan. We talked about line weights, construction lines, details, and trees. Now what we're going to do is we are going to open that drawing. We just took a good picture of it. Good lighting, camera nice and parallel, flat to the image. Good line weights, lined up the photograph really carefully. We um, we had good even lighting across it as good as possible, so we don't have any hot spots. There's no flares of like lamp coming in from one direction or another. There's no bright sunlight or a window kind of messing with our image. So here is that image. Can everybody see my computer screen? Give me a, give me a thumbs up if you got it. All right. All right, so we're opening up that image. So this is that image raw out of my phone. All right, let's just zoom in on some of the detail here. So we've got We've got a nice dark section cut for where the ground is. We, have, we started with the plan, we laid out that plan. We have our section marker right in here with a little flag. You can see that's starting to kind of get consumed by the drawing. We have a north arrow, very clear, very important for the uh, line. We have trees and entourage. We have some people sitting and walking around the sections so that we can see that information. We got nice even lighting. Okay. We didn't crop it in the camera. We didn't crop it in the phone. We just did a little bit of exposure adjustment just to see what we were working with. Now there's a couple different options that we can go to to adjusting the balance of this image. Now there is no color in this drawing. And that's actually a strength because it'll allow us to push and pull the image a little bit more. I'm actually going to leave the green table so you guys can see how much having color might affect a drawing. The first thing we're going to do is go to adjustments. And the one that I use the most is called levels. So it's right here in image adjustments levels. And this gives you a pictogram, this chart of all the white pixels, all the gray pixels, and all the black pixels on the screen. Now the benefit to having drawn with a little bit of black marker and on a white sheet of paper is that I can actually use those to balance out the sheet here. You can see that there was a window to my left-hand side. And so there's a little bit of brightness to my left-hand side. If I was gonna retake this image, I might actually drop that curtain on the left-hand side so that it's not as bright. It doesn't seem that bright right now because your eye is changing it, but let me just show you. Um, if we move this, this dropper to the side, you can see that it starts to lighten some of the light gray pixels in the, in the image. What that does is it also starts to obliterate some of the finer line weights. So we could take it way over, and where we drew in pen, it actually shows up quite well, but it gets rid of some of that kind of delicious line weight. Same thing with the black. I could do that and it makes the darks darker. And what our objective is, and then this is the gray, this is what sets the mid-tone. So our objective is to kind of find the happy medium between all of these. So it might be at some of these peaks, and it might be somewhere between these, and then adjusting the gray tone. Now you can see if I put the gray tone too much over here, or too much over here, it kind of obliterates the drawing. Now at this moment in time, you might be like, that's why I wanna do this in pen. But you can erase pencil and you can sneak up and you have more control on line weights in pencil than you do with pen. So there's a trade off. The other thing I would say is the more that you push or pull the image, if you guys look at this, see that green, that what started out as light green, you see how also the image is starting to kind of break down and pixelate. It's starting to flash and get yellow. There's purple little tiny pixels in places. That's showing that we're pushing the image a little bit too far. So the other thing that I can do is I can actually grab these eyedroppers. And this is set for black, mid-range, and white. So let's grab the white and just click over here in the whitest area of the drawing. And let's grab this one and let's click in the blackest area of the drawing. And that kind of sets it already. You can see that I'm losing some information, but it's balancing out the drawing a little bit more. The problem is, is that over here on the right hand side of the drawing, there's still kind of a grayness to it. At this point in time, what I should do is just retake the picture. It's going to save me time right now if I retake the picture. I'm set up, I have the drawing in front of me, I should just close down that window and retake the picture. It's a lot more important. It's hard, it was hard to see this in the camera itself, but once I opened it up, it was very, very uh, visible. 
But let me just show you how we can continue to work around this. This is less than ideal, but let's just do this. Let's do take the white balance from over here instead of where it's really white. Let's just work our way over. And you can see how the white balance is getting whiter. So we've actually added a true kind of white somewhere over here. Let's not go all the way because we're losing the beautiful construction lines that were over here. And even the like north arrow is starting to get kind of attacked. So let's work our way back where we can kind of split the difference. I'm moderately happy with this one. And let's do the black balance somewhere over here. Maybe that's too much. Okay, that was way too much. Don't worry, we can we can salvage it by just going over here. Adjust it a little bit more. And I'm gonna adjust the gray tones up a little bit and say okay. Once I'm happy with that. Um, let's make this a layer. Actually, cancel. Open. I'm going to back up. I'm going to make a layer from the background. OK. Let's duplicate this layer. And now we can actually compare and contrast these two. So I'm going to go to Control L, brings those up again. White balance was actually like over in this area, somewhere like that. I don't know whether you guys can see this on your screens, but on my screen, it's, it's kind of warping between a yellowish white, a bluish white, and a greenish white. All right, we're a little bit weird right now. The white's a little strange, but the mid-range is pretty okay. There we go. That seems all right. Cool. Uh, so that's what it used to look like, and that's what it looks like now. It's gotten contrastier, but we've lost some of the delectable grays that were going on there. Um, I'm getting a lot of interference from this area over here on the screen. Let me just try it one more way. I'm going to duplicate that layer again. And this is like, you can see I'm just doing iterations and experimenting very fast without a lot of downtime. Let's crop the image out. So I'm just gonna slice this piece out. I'm gonna keep this edge over here because I wanna show you how to fix that in a minute. Paste that in as a new layer. Go to levels again. Set the dark. Set the white. Too white. Not white enough. Sneak up on it. There's that weird green gray. We'll fix that in a minute. That is way too dirty. Clean, not quite obliterated. I like it. All right, let's look at that versus. There we go. I like that one the most. That seems to be the cleanest. All right, so I've gotten rid of all of the frustration that was happening around the image. Um, I'm going to crop it to that view very carefully. Move you guys out of the way for a minute. Just crop it to that view. All right. Uh, actually, you know what? No, I'm not. I'm not going to crop it. Sorry, I'm not gonna crop it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dump a bunch of white behind it. Layer, new layer. Because when we put this in on our presentation, I was just thinking it one step ahead. I'm trying to think, how are we gonna look at this? If we're gonna print it out once or we're gonna put it on Instagram, it's not gonna be on a white background. But actually, it's going to be viewed on a white background. And so we want it to float on that white background. And so let's give it a white background to float upon. Um, so we can see that it's floating really nicely over on the left-hand side, but not on the right-hand side. So now it's time to do some fixing just in some areas. So we're going to use the burn and dodge tools. So that's over here in the toolbar, about halfway down. If you click and hold, you can get burn and dodge. So dodge is actually going to lighten the exposure of our layer a little bit. So I'm going to select that layer and let's set dodge to be a little bit more intense and we'll send it to work in the highlights. And I can actually dodge that layer out a little bit. Can make it a little bit bigger. I'm holding Alt and the right, right button on the mouse to make it a little bit brighter. Just to lighten that up. And then I'm also gonna use the eraser tool very gently. 
So again, I'm holding the Alt button and my right mouse button at the same time. Let's do a soft brush. I'm just gonna erase out that edge just a little bit. If I was worried about going in here and really hitting the drawing in a way that I didn't wanna hit the drawing, I could just make myself a lasso. And go back to the eraser tool. And that way, if I sneeze, I won't achoo. I won't like break the drawing. I can just back up. And go in here and just slice this piece out. I'm gonna go in with the uh, dodge tool a little bit more in here. It's starting to get yellow. I don't really want this drawing to have a color. Um, so I don't like that yellow hue that it's taking on. Um, my north arrow, just like I need this to be lighter over here, my north arrow needs to be darker. So I'm gonna go in with the burn tool. I'm gonna burn that in a little bit more. I'm gonna add a little bit more burn to the image over here. That's gonna make these just a little bit darker. You guys might not actually even see it on your monitor, but this is getting a little bit darker over here. You're safe. Sorry? I was saying I can see. You can see it? Um, so I can actually get a little bit more line weight into this area. Dodge it out a little bit more over here. Um, I'm gonna go in and just do a gentle erase. And now I'm gonna do one of my favorite tricks is a really big eraser tool, but very far away to just kind of gently erase that area out. And then go back and grab the burn. Run that in a little bit more. So we've got the image in here. Uh, and then I might actually go in with the eraser tool just because I am a big nerd about this kind of stuff and just kind of gently kind of, again, just take out some of these areas around this tree, kind of cut those out. We've got a general idea there, but we've gotten rid of that frame that kind of gets it stuck. We still have the construction lines. We still have the deliciousness of those construction lines, which is nice. Um, if you wanted to, this is actually a kind of poche that I like to do where I will actually kind of trace out an area and bring the sketch back in. And then I can grab my burn tool here. And I can kind of burn these line weights in on the inside of the drawing. And you'll see that the inside of the drawing is a little bit darker than the outside of the drawing. Uh, I can right click and say, select inverse. And then I can even hit the dodge tool and dodge the outside just slightly. Um, Let's do a little bit less exposure on that dodge because I still want those construction lines. But what you can see is in the, in the uh, plan there, the deck is a little bit darker than the rest of it. Now it still has this weird yellow hue to it, but we have the crispness of a computer drawing with the handmadeness of a hand drawing. You could also take this from AutoCAD and draw over top of it. You could print it out and draw over top of it and then do this process again. The more you recur through this process, the better it's gonna get. Um, one last thing, let's remove the yellow hue. So in adjustments, I could go in and say, make it monochromatic. I could say, go to uh, get rid of all the tonings altogether. But if we go into, let's see, let's do brightness contrast and just change that a little bit. Not a lot, just a little bit. And I'm gonna go into hue saturation. And I'm just gonna pull the saturation down all the way which takes it into a gray, full gray drawing. So any touch of hue has now gone away completely. Um, I want the house to stick out just a little bit more. So I'm gonna go in and do that same trick that I was doing earlier, where I'm just kind of grabbing some pieces of this uh, around where the house is. I'm holding down shift, which allows me to uh, add on to the selection. So I'm just grabbing like underneath, underneath the house a little bit here.
not going to be too hung up on the details. But you can see that post processing of an image is really important. I'm going to take 15 minutes to post process the image. It's going to look way better than where we started. Um, all right, I'm going to do edit. Let's look at that. Let's feather that selection a little bit. Let's feather it by like three pixels. So feathers up here in the right hand corner. I'm going to feather by three pixels. Go back to the dodge tool and we're just going to kind of gently 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 dodge out some of those areas just a little bit to make them look a little bit lighter I'm not i'm not super happy with how that's turning out should be tracing just a little bit more carefully let's go really really light just a hue of stuff there there we go just to make them look a little lighter make the house stand out a little bit more I really need to go into all of these, like this one too. Um, this is something that comes easier and easier as you guys practice it. So as you are seeing other students working on this and it seems like they're working quickly, please know that they started out just as frustrated and slow. And it's about just kind of getting a workflow that works for you and practicing it. The real joy comes right now when, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn off this, this layer and let's look at where we started. That's what it looked like to start out with, right? Which looks like a bad snapshot of what I'm doing on my desk. And then let's look at that image, right? So here's the image cleaned up. Let me just turn the opacity down so you guys can watch the transformation. So going from here, all of those edits make it look like that. Look how cleaned up that is. That would take so long with an eraser and, you know, and, and, and with just a couple of clean Photoshop edits. Levels, dodge and burn, a uh, little opacity, a uh, little bit of cut and paste, a uh, little bit of erasing and cropping and then some white in the background, and you've got this nice clean image. Now, for your own record, I would save this as a Photoshop file. So you could go back, and you could match your drawings to your other drawings. The halfway through this, remember, I realized we need this to play with a presentation, so it needs to be against a white background. So I'm purposely giving it lots of white space here so it can match up with other drawings. Um, the only other thing that's missing that I should have drawn in was a visual scale. I should have drawn in a visual scale on the bottom over there. So let's just save this really quickly as a site section, site plan, demo. I'm gonna save that as a Photoshop file with maximized capability. Um, of course, I can also put in, I can build in my own um, visual scale right now. So I could go in here and I'm just gonna grab actually this piece of my drawing. right here, and again. Let's make sure that they're, it's one inch long. There we go, there's one inch. There's another segment, half that segment, half that segment again. And so here's what I'm gonna do. Just gonna snag that. Here he is empty. There we go. And you. There we go. There's my, and then what I would do, I would grab that. And I would put that, I would put the text in the presentation, not actually in this itself. So let's save that again. So now we have the visual scale in there. We have the north arrow in there. You don't have to draw the north arrow every time, actually. If you have the north arrow, you could cut it out, make it its own thing, and just put it on every drawing that you need. 
Um, now to go in my presentation, I'm going to save it as either a JPEG, a PDF, or a PNG file. Uh, depending on, like if I had colored backgrounds, I would save it as a PNG file and let the white be clear. But since I'm going to go in as a white background, I'm going to just say file save as. Oh, and my Photoshop just crashes. So let's open it back up and just say file save as. And we're going to set it as a JPEG. And that's going to save it as a copy automatically. And there we go. I've got a JPEG save. It's been cleaned up. Make sure that the, the file size is listed at maximum for the compression so that we're not compressing it at all. Say OK. And there we go. We've got, let's see, as a Photoshop file, it was 34 megabytes. As a, as a JPEG, it's like a couple of megs, not even. Now, my computer has having its own little special error today, um, which is fine. It's looking for the university server. I'm not upset by that, but there it is. There, it's saved. And as a JPEG, it takes up two megabytes. So it's much tinier compared to what it is. I'm gonna stop the recording right here.